What's up guys, I got a brand new video for you today. Today we're looking at LumaFusion on the iPad Pro 10.5 inch and a lot of you were asking me in my iPad Pro review how the heck I was editing 4K video on this thing and LumaFusion is the app that you're gonna need for this. This app is actually like super full featured. If we open it up here, you're gonna see a few things that kind of look similar to like Final Cut and Premiere. It's a linear timeline and you get three tracks of video and three tracks of audio. There's a lot of cool features that you can do in this app and they actually just updated it with a bunch of coloring options. You can add LUTs into it. And I'm just gonna go through some of the settings and maybe kind of craft a little video out of some footage that I shot on the C200. This footage was shot in RAW. The iPad Pro cannot do RAW video yet, but I transcoded all the RAW stuff to MP4 so the iPad Pro could read it and then I uploaded it to my Google Drive folder and then downloaded it onto the iPad Pro. And I'll show you how to do that. But first we gotta set up our session and you do that by going up to this little thing here and going to the plus sign here. And then you're gonna name your project. It's gonna name it test one. And then you set your frame rate. So you can go right down to 24 frames per second or way up to 60. We're gonna work in a 24 frame timeline and then our aspect ratio is going to be 16 by 9, but it gives you a bunch of other different options here. Even 239, which is pretty cool. But we're going to work in 16.9 for this one. And then basically, you just go to Done and hit the plus sign, and it creates your project. Now, if you want to change some of the settings, you can go to this little gear here with the question mark, click on Project Settings, and you can actually go back and change your frame rate if you didn't like the frame rate that you had. So you're like, ah, oh, crap, I didn't mean to do that. So you can go back, you can change the background colors, different starting times and different things like that. But we're gonna start with this first. And the first thing you gotta do is load in some media. So if you have an SD card with some files on it, some cameras I found didn't actually work, but my C200 recording MP4 worked and the GH5, which I'm filming with above my head right now, also works on this. But I had issues with my Sony camera for some reason. I don't know if it didn't like the codec or what. So first thing we're going to do is we're going to look at our camera roll. This is after you've imported footage. So you're going to go hit this little flower up here in the top left corner. And you're going to go to Photos. And then you're going to go to Albums. And then you'll find whatever video you've imported. So I've imported a bunch of this video here. So as you can see, i got some slow motion stuff here. And we can click on that and just play it back to see what it looks like basically that's in there. Now I also imported some stuff from Google Drive which is pretty cool because you can go to import and you can actually sync your Google Drive folder with this. So you can go up into here and go to import media and this is actually some audio that I uploaded to my Google Drive folder and I'm going to use that for this video. So I'm actually going to download this now so we're going to click on that and you're going to hit the little over sign here and it's going to download that song. Now it's the same thing for all the video. You basically have to click on your files and import them all ahead of time and then it somehow saves it onto your iPad. I don't really know where it saves it yet, but I do know that they just added a option in here if you go to the files folder. And I did notice that in here LumaFusion now makes a folder and your presets, projects, fonts, and different things like that are actually getting saved to these folders. So we can have some color grading options, some LUTs, and different things like that. But now we're getting something that's more similar to a real computer here, and this is pretty cool. So I'm going to go back out of this, back to LumaFusion. And what I usually like to do is edit to music. So the first thing I'm going to do is I'm going to drop in an audio track, and then I'll start importing my clips and editing them and show you how that works. So basically what you want to do is you want to tap on the music, it's gonna load it into the preview window here and then you can take a listen to it. So say you didn't want to start exactly at the start, you can drag this here. This is your in point and then this is your out point. So basically if you wanted to, you could just take that small section and drag it down to the timeline. But I'm gonna do the entire thing right off the start. Just click and hold down on it and then you drag it into the timeline. And so, like I said before, it has three audio tracks. So if you click and hold down on it again, you can move it. And basically that gives you your three audio tracks. And that's really all you really need if you want music, dialogue, and some sound effects. That's three different tracks. If you tried having more audio than that, you're pretty much screwed. But this, is, this isn't a computer, this is an iPad. And the fact that it can do three audio tracks, three video tracks in 4K with color grading and stuff, you're going to see that in a bit. It's pretty wild. 
So I'm gonna click and hold, move the audio track up to the top here. I don't know if this is gonna be a tutorial for you guys, but at least I can show you how it works and maybe you can get some ideas. But uh, I wouldn't call myself the master at this yet. You have to look around and find someone who does do tutorials on this. But maybe in the future I'll do more tutorials. Right now I'm just going to kind of give you an introduction into LumaFusion and how it works. Uh, I'm going to go and open up some footage now and bring it in here and we'll see what happens. Okay, so going up to the folder up here. Go to our photos. Now this is my camera roll. Currently I only have these seven videos in here. Some of this stuff is actually 120 frames per second shot on the C200. But the way that the C200 does slow motion is that it actually outputs it to like 24 frames per second or 30 frames per second. Kind of like the GH5 when you're doing variable frame rate. So basically when I play this back, it's already going to be in 24 frames per second and it's already going to be basically slowed down. So we can find some parts that we want to cut. I don't know if I'm going to start with this clip. I'm going to look around and see something that I want to start with. And I don't know if I really want to start with any of these clips. So I'm going to go into where I imported those files from my Google Drive folder. You can see a bunch of files here. And a lot of this stuff is actually shot in C Log 3, which the iPad Pro can edit log footage. I'll show you in a bit how to load LUTs into it or even just do your own color corrections. But we'll go through this footage here and you can actually scrub the little wheel here and go through the footage that way. Now this stuff was all shot at 60 frames per second. So I think what I'm going to do is I'm going to start with this clip. So I'll set my in point and I'm going to let it play for a bit. And I'm going to stop her right there before she puts her hand back up. I'll set my out point by clicking on that. Then I'm going to click on this and hold and then I'll just drag it down into the timeline. So it looks too fast. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to slow that down and all you basically do is double click on the clip. And that takes you into the properties of the clip. So you can do your color grading here, a bunch of different effects, but I'm gonna click on this little thing that looks like a tachometer. And this lets you speed up or slow down the clip. So basically I'm gonna slow this clip down to half the speed. So we're gonna go down to half, which slows the clip down by half. So one and a half times and we play this back, you'll see it playing back in slow motion now. Okay, so that's the clip we want. Basically we click the back button. Now you can see that it's playing back at 50%. It shows on the top of the clip there. And we can play this back now, it's in slow motion. So basically what I wanna do now is cut this on beat. So I don't want this clip to last that long. So I want it to end on this kick drum right here. You can see the waveform where it's rising there. We're gonna click and drag the clip to that. And now the clip will cut on that beat. So now I'm gonna drop in my next clip on that beat. And the next clip I want is the one where I followed her out to the water. So we'll start right about here. Mark our endpoint. And I'm going to stop about there. Mark my out point. Click and hold. Drag it down to the timeline. Again, I'm gonna have to slow this down to match the rest of the stuff, so I'm gonna double click on the clip. Go this little thing here. Drag it down to half. Close this out. All right, so I wanna cut on that little kick drum right there. The do, the do, the second kick drum. So we line our clip up with the playhead here. Then we're gonna click this little scissors here and that will split the clip. Now to delete this clip, you gotta click off, click on just that clip and then you can click the little trash can here and it'll get rid of that clip. So next I gotta go back up to my clips here and find the next shot I wanna put in here. And I think I wanted one of a close above her back just looking at the water. This one here, I think. So something like that, mark my out point. Click hold, drag down into the timeline, double click on the clip, go to the speed in reverse, set this to half the speed, go back out. So the next shot I wanna to go to is a close up of the side view of her face. I think that was in this shot, it was this shot here. So 
So she's looking off in the distance. Mark my endpoint. And then she looks right at the camera. Pause it there, mark my out point. Click and drag that down in the timeline. Double click the clip. We're gonna slow this down again. Half the speed. Go back out. Now you're probably wondering why it looks so flat. We will color grade this after I get this all edited. So don't worry about it. And you can actually click and move the clip in like this. You don't have to cut it if you don't want to. All right, so I'm gonna start right from this clip, set my endpoint. And before it goes out of focus, click, hold, drag down to the timeline. Double click the clip. Slow it down. Go back out. Right where arm is, set my out point, click, hold, drag into the timeline, double click it. Slow motion again, half the speed. Now, watch and see the crop bars at the bottom. Notice how there's more crop bars on this shot versus this shot. That's because this was shot in true 4K and this was shot in UHD. So what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna add black bars over the entire thing at the end that kind of covers and hides those changes. All right, so I'm basically gonna add a couple more shots. I think you kind of get the idea of how to edit and then I'll show you how to color grade in this thing and how to bring in LUTs. So I'm gonna go back to my imported. There's a couple shots I liked in here. I'm gonna make this slow motion, double click it. Keep in mind this was all shot in 60 frames per second, that's why I can do this. If your footage is only in 30 or 24 frames per second, doing this won't give you that smooth a slow motion, give you that kind of choppy fake slow motion. So if I want the audio to fade out around here, double click on the audio. And down here you get some audio properties and you can actually make keyframes by clicking right here where you see the volume and the plus keyframe thing. So basically it makes a little keyframe right here and then we can move the audio ahead a bit. So say I want that to be the end fade out point, put another keyframe in there and then I click on the volume here and I drag it all the way down and you'll see the keyframe here. So you can automate your audio levels that way by putting in different keyframes and adjusting the audio. They've added a bunch of filters so you can do some delays, distortions, there's some compression and basically a simple EQ, it's pretty cool. So now you can see our audio fades out here. So then you would just cut that, and this is where your video would end, trash that. And I'll make this clip continue on, but I can also make this clip fade out as well. So basically what you gotta do is you gotta click on the clip. I'm just gonna cut right here where I want it to start fading. So this is the last part of the clip that I want to end. Basically what you gotta do is click the little plus button here, transition. Oops. So to undo that, didn't mean to put that there. You go back like that. We want to put it right here. Click on the clip. Hit the little plus thing. Transition. And I think it automatically puts in a cross dissolve. So now we can play it and it'll cross dissolve out on that. So basically it's just dipping the black. But if you had another clip in there, you could actually dissolve it into the next clip. All right, so that's kind of just the basic gist of how to edit inside of LumaFusion. This video is getting kind of long, so I'm going to stop it now. And I'll come out with another video in a couple days showing how to do color grading and effects and different things like that. And also loading in custom LUTs, which is pretty cool. They just added that feature to the app. And yeah, that video will also be probably pretty long. So I'm going to stop it now. If you like this video, give it a thumbs up. If you dislike this video, give it a thumbs down twice. I'll see you in the next one.